Hello there, world history people. Let's continue learning all about the Cold War. So remember, the Cold War is all about just big, crazy nuclear bombs. Everyone thought the world could end at any time. Uh, the ideological differences between capitalism and communism. And the world had so many nuclear bombs, it was a really scary place. All right, but now let's talk about something that wasn't as scary. The space race. The space race was a contest between the Soviet Union and the United States over who would be the first nation to explore outside of our planet. Uh, it lasted between 1955 and 1969, and uh, a lot of good things came out of this aspect of the Cold War. And uh, a question I always like to sort of ask students is like, uh, who won the space race? Um, that's definitely a debatable question, but sort of which, uh, which country did more to advance human exploration of space? All right, let's check it out. So here's the Time Magazine cover. These, uh, the cosmonaut and the astronaut are racing to the moon. Yeah, the space race. Uh, a bunch of cool stuff with the space race. And here's the big milestones of the space race. So the Soviet Union kind of got off to the right start with the first satellite, the first human in space. But then the United States, we actually built a first facility in space. And we actually got people to the moon. Um, but then the Soviet Union made a proper space station uh, in the late 1980s. So, all that's cool. All right, here we are duking it out in space and fighting over the moon. Rawr. Okay, so as I said, the Soviet Union got started in the space race by launching the first orbital satellite named Sputnik into outer space. And uh, it did have like a tiny camera on it, and it could take some really low resolution pictures of like the United States. And we were so freaked out. The United, United States was like, oh my gosh, the Soviets can spy on us from, from outer space. We can't be undone with this. So in response to this satellite, the United States invested millions of new dollars into our education. And we also invested into our own space program. And uh, I know that uh, one of my uncles really benefited from this period of U.S. history. Like he got all these fancy science classes and was encouraged to to learn all about how things worked and how to do stuff in space. So that's super cool. All right, let's check out some of these pictures. So that's the first satellite. Look at how small it is. It's not even that much bigger than, like, a, a human could hold it. That's not like satellites today. Uh, there's the original Sputnik. And then Soviet fires Earth satellite into space. It's circling the globe at 18,000 miles an hour. Sphere tracked crossing the United States. School board gets $16 billion or million dollars in bonds. And then they are throwing a satellite into space. And the Soviet Union super proud of this. All right. And after the success of Sputnik, the Soviets developed a capsule that they believe could support life in space. So it, rather than test it on humans, they first sent a dog into outer space named Laika. Oh, Laika. You know, it's... Uh, this poor dog, because they, they sent the, the capsule with the ability to go into space, but they didn't have any return feature for the capsule. So they instead just put like a video camera in there, and they watched this dog just hanging out in outer space. By all accounts, she was having a great time. She was, you know, she had a little, little food and water dish up there too. She was just there in space for six days, but uh, eventually the, uh, the capsule burned up in our atmosphere, and Laika never made it home. But uh, she still is the first creature to ever leave planet Earth and the first creature in outer space. It's, it's kind of funny. She's actually referenced in the movie Guardians of the Galaxy. But uh, yeah, anyway, Laika the Space Dog. I think it's an interesting story. So here's uh, Laika the Space Dog, the first ever uh, extraterrestrial explorer from planet Earth. There she is with her CCCP helmet. The astronaut dog. Oh, goodness. Uh, the Red Pupnik, world asks how to get her down. Dog lovers unite in all-day protest. Yeah, that's kind of sad. There, there she is, just having the best time in outer space. Uh, yep, like the dog. There she is, exploring the world. And they even have her in the Soviet monument to uh, outer space. It's pretty great. Okay, so with Laika's success, this time they build another space capsule that actually has a return to Earth function. And the Soviet Union sent this farm boy named Yuri Gagarin to become the first human being to ever leave uh, planet Earth and successfully return. 
Um, and what's kind of cool is as soon as Yuri got into outer space, he went on his radio and he told the people of the Soviet Union, I see no God up here. And that statement really shows the kind of anti-religious vibes that the Soviet Union had. You know, it's like supposedly above the clouds, there's heaven. Well, Yuri had gone above heaven and there he was out of our, out of our planet. Um, and Yuri successfully returned and he toured the world. Um, but Yuri really wanted to go back in space. So I think it was in the 1960s, he got in another rocket, and sadly that rocket exploded on the launch pad, and uh, he, he did not survive. But he still is remembered as the first human being to, to make this great scientific achievement and explore the stars. So good job, Yuri. All right, so here's a statue of him. He's the rocket man going into space. I see no God is what he famously said. There's Yuri and Laika together in space. Um, yep, so Yuri Gagarin. Uh, Russia puts man in space, greatest feat of science in human history. And he's brought back alive as well. Wow, that's, that's really impressive. Okay. So, the USA got really freaked out. And we did the largest influx in education spending ever in the history of America. We're like, how do we keep getting beaten by the Soviet Union? They're, they're way smarter than us. We have never said anyone in outer space. And uh, President John F. Kennedy famously put uh, this requirement on the American people saying that we would put a man on the moon before 1970. And everyone was like, there's no way. There's no way we could get someone to the moon. We haven't even got someone to outer space yet. But uh, America would not be undone by all these you know, seeming victories for the Soviet Union. So we put our people to the test. And we're going to make it happen. So a lot more science classes. And here's kids learning stuff. Okay. And all that work did pay off when America sent Neil Armstrong to the moon. He made one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind on July 20th, 1969. And he proved America victorious in our race to the moon. So good job, Neil. You did it. And uh, the, the kind of funny thing is, as soon as our guys got on the moon, they were only there for like 20 minutes. They like played golf and like jumped around, took some rocks, and then got in their pod and flew back to the spaceship and flew back to, to Earth. So didn't really do a lot on the moon, but we were there and we put a flag. So that's all pretty cool. All right. So, yep, there's us uh, looking back at planet Earth. Neil Armstrong, he made it. They got this little buggy on the moon. And playing golf on the moon, hanging out with the flag, and then we're walking on the moon. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. All right, and that's it for the space race. Peace out.